uh, here we're setting up the master operator account, uh, which I'm taking as BF admin. Um, I specified lowercase, but case doesn't really matter um, for that. And then I send a password for the master operator account. This is separate from the site certificate password. The master operator is the overall administrative account you'll use when you're using the Big Fix console. Next, they've got choice to configure their firewall to allow Big Fix traffic through. Uh, and then I'm specifying the type of installation I'm going to do. This is a new install, so I'm going to install with the uh, Big Fix license authorization file. Uh, that's going to require going out to the internet, so I have to define if there's a proxy or not. If you do have a proxy, it will prompt you for all the proxy information. Then I point to the location of the license authorization file that I downloaded. Make sure that you give it full path and include the name of the license authorization file like I did on the screen. Uh, now it's prompting for the uh, name of the server that's going to be bound with the certificate. Once you decide on your choice for that, um, that associates it with that server uh, from then on. Uh, you create the site admin password, which is the password specific to the site certificate that's being created. Um, don't ever lose that password. We'll talk, probably talk about that more in a minute. Then you'll specify a key size for creating the certificate. You'll specify a folder to save the results in. And then you go ahead and uh, submit the request out to the internet. Then you get choices for setting some of your other installation parameters, the language encoding, the default port that Big Fix will use. This is where you would change that if you need to. And other settings that can be changed uh, after the fact uh, through the BES admin tool if you ever need to. So uh, go ahead and take the defaults. Then I'm going to show you the, home, the directory where I'm going to save the results. And so far, the files aren't there. There are going to be three files that will be created. And now, after the next prompt comes up with the messages that they were created, I can look in that directory again. And I'll see the three files, the license.crt, the license.pvk, and the masthead.afxm, which is also known as the action site file. Next, I want to indicate if uh, I want web reports to run as uh, root, with root privileges or not. And in my case, uh, for this installation, I'm going to accept that. I could set up a service account and have it run as that service account if I need to. All right, now it's going through and uh, creating the database, BFNT, um, for the platform. Uh, this will take a minute. And while we're waiting, we can talk a little bit more about that site certificate password I mentioned. Um, the certificate you created in the previous step is unique to this installation and tied to the server name. It's got its own unique password that you need in order to leverage the certificate anytime you do uh, any sort of platform upgrade, migration, periodic maintenance, that kind of thing. Don't ever lose that password. It's not saved anywhere. It's not written in the database because we created it before the database itself is being created here. It's not sent to HCL. We don't have a copy of it anywhere. You're responsible for uh, keeping that password. So they can't stress how critical it is. Don't lose that password. Again, I'm letting this run in real time so that you can see just how long or how quick, as depending on how you want to look at it, uh, the process takes. So BFNT is now created. Now it's creating the database for web reports, which I believe is called BEZ Reporting. And this is a database that stores uh, user credentials for the users of web reports and also any custom reports that you may create. Uh, other than that, web reports actually pulls its data out of the main BigFix database, BFNT. Uh, so the uh, BEZ reporting database usually doesn't get that big. So now while we're waiting, I'm just going to check the system to see what I built so far. Uh, I can see that I've got DB2 processes out here now, and this just kind of shows you uh, what you would expect to see in the process table. Uh, I can look in some of the directories that are going to be used, and so far I'm seeing that I don't have anything out there yet uh, under op. The binaries aren't there, but if I look under home db2 inst1, I now see some subdirectories related to the database instance that we just created. 
Uh, you can see in the background that, or foreground now, that uh, the different uh, server RPMs are being installed. Uh, so now if I go back and look in some of those directories, I should expect to see some contents under there. So now under op, I've got folders for some of the different components of the platform that have been installed. So again, we'll let the um, installation process continue in real time. Um, so I'll just wait for the uh, next entry to come up. Other things to consider, uh, I mentioned those three files, the license.pvk, the license.crt, and the masthead.afxm. Along with that site certificate password, those are three other files that you want to keep secure because with those, you can very easily reinstall your BigFix server if you ever need to. If your server crashes, if you're doing um, some sort of server migration, with those files, you can very easily recover your platform. Okay, now we're seeing that the different services associated with the platform have been started. Um, now, uh, finally, the web reports server has been started and it's finishing up the configuration. Uh, now it's handling uh, the installation of the web UI, which is the browser-based version of the console. Uh, you still will need a big fix console and we'll talk about that in just a second. But now, as you can see, the process is complete. Uh, I get the message that the installation completed successfully. And here, it's reminding me that I need to install the console on the Windows machine. To finish some of the configuration of the platform, you still need that installed Windows console. Uh, so if I go to var opt uh, and just look to see some of what's been created, I'll see that I've got under there uh, a BES installers folder that we'll look at in a second. Uh, to show the services that were started, I can check the services table under Linux and I can see the different services that are running. Now for the BES installers folder, the installation program actually provides uh, an installer package for the client and an installer package for the console. The client folder includes both the RPM uh, for a Linux client install and the executable for a Windows client install. Uh, the console folder includes the Windows setup.exe and the action site file. So to install a, a console anywhere, simply make that folder available, either copy it over, or make it on a network share on a Windows machine of some sort, run the setup, and you'll be all set. Finally, for reference, I brought up the raw recording time so you could see the entire length of time this took from the time I downloaded the installer through the time I completed the installation. I did use some editing techniques to speed up part of the video, but you can see the overall process to install the Big Fix server does not take that long. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Here are some QR codes for a variety of Big Fix resources on the internet. Uh, the QR code that's written by my name links to my email, so if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks, and have a great day.